Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Well, here it is, summertime. We're spending a lot of time outside having parties, just gathering. You want that to be an inviting spot, one that's comfortable. You can design it that way. We're going to talk about outdoor living spaces. Now, we've talked to her before about the interior. She's an interior designer, but I guess she's also an exterior designer. I don't even know if that's a term, but I'm going to go with that today. She is Sandy Schuster, and it's Rooms by Sandy, Decorating Dan Interiors, and today it's Exteriors. And she's back with us. Welcome. How are you? (laughs) I'm good, Steve. How are you? I had no idea that you also take care of the the outside. So uh, very uh, interested to learn what we can do and some ideas. What's a starting point? We look at our backyard and we want to make it inviting. We want to make it comfortable. Where do you begin with that? Well, I mostly do interiors, but probably my favorite favorite rooms in the are outside of the are outside of the house. And that's outdoor patios, porches, um, your front door. Um, I had some some pictures I'd love to show you if you if you want want to look at those. Let's. I love your pictures. Pictures. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Everything. I'm very visual. So. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? Sure can. Okay. So, this is a cute little house and had a great um well a great slab of cement out front <laughs> and um you know really cute house but um I just think it needed to be more of an outdoor room. You know, my name of my company is Rooms by Sandy. So as far as I'm concerned, your outdoor space can be a room. So Hmm. um, did several things to this home. Um, First of all, put this pergola on the front with a little kind of a little picket kind of fence around it with a gate to kind of define the space. Very nice. Very, very warm. Very like you just want to be uh close to sunset sitting on that porch area right and it is, it is shady in the evening and um changed the door um and you know i think last week we talked a lot about color changing the color and some of my clients are afraid of color in fact the new trend is one of my real estate friends she says the new trend if you want to sell your home is white you know, make it white and, pl- and neutral. Wow. And I think if you're afraid to use color, don't be afraid to use it outside. Because um, especially in this, you know, in the summer months here in Denver, we get lots of beautiful, we get a lot of beautiful sunshine here all the time. But um, I think it's the time to, to not be afraid to, to play with color. Hmm. Didn't hear that about the make it white. Um, but interesting because who, who's going to say I don't like that color? Because <laughs> you right. got like a clean slate. <laughs> Although I am seeing more and more homes with interesting colored front doors, like red or an orange door. Have you seen that? Yes. In fact, I was going to talk about that. Some of my slides show just changing the color of your front door can make a big difference. Um, this is actually more of a close up of the Woof. the front patio. Wow. Okay. And- so I, I just want to tell you. Looking at the other pictures, it looked inviting. Now, even more. And <laughs> from the perspective of the previous picture, I didn't I didn't realize how much space was there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can sit four people here comfortably. And um, another another big big I think you things you have to do when you have an outdoor space is do outdoor area rugs. Um, th- th- this is two rugs and it fills up most of the space, but it's polypropylene so they're outdoor um, rugs so you can hose them off um, mm. you can blow you know they're, they're just easy to care for you know after probably f- three to four years they might start wearing down and fraying but um, you can leave them out during the winter months uh, and they just they just make it a soft place for your feet and they make it feel like a room instead of just a, a cement patio sure. And I experienced that in the backyard with a rug. And it was about the same time you're saying three, four ish years in there that it's it's a little bit of wear. my biggest challenge was keeping it clean because, you know, you hose off the patio and then stuff now goes onto the rug. You, you hose that off, 
you get mildew on the rug forever. You know, I'd be out there you know, scrubbing it with uh, so, so, different solutions like vinegar and you know borax and all of that. Um, never had much success in getting it super clean after a number of years, but I, I think you answered it in that you can't. It's about the expectations. Don't right. ex, don't expect you know, more than you, three years. Yeah, I also think it's wise to invest in a battery operated leaf blower. And you can just blow off the dust and dirt so you don't have to hose it off. Sure. I mean, here in Denver, it dries out. We're so dry. But invest in one of those that's worth it. Instead of sweeping, just blow blow all the, the dirt and grime off so that it doesn't land on, stay on the rug and, and sure. ruin it. So Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I again, back to the yeah. expectations. You, you can't yeah. expect it to last uh, that long. Yeah. And this here are some other shots of it. And then, um, you know, that, that front door was just um, kind of blocking the energy and just kind of, um, so just, ch- here's a, the, a, you can see that how the door, it's, let's see, that's, a, that's probably a better picture of, but it has, um, you can see through it, and it just brings more light into the home, and it just also brings, I think, more interest to the home itself. Love it. Yeah. And even the storage area, if you want to call it that, uh, in that one picture. You know, you have a seating section there too, but you can also use it for other stuff or the cushions. You can, you can sit on there and you can also throw the cushions in there when it rains or snows. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So charming. Yeah. Looks, looks just like you just want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is just the, um, put a window box under the window and um, just to kind of give it, give it a little more character instead of just a plain, plain facade. What are those things to the left and right of the window that yeah, sort of look like shutters? What are they called? I'm not sure what they're called. <laughs> they're called a wood and a metal um, accent piece. Was was that there and or did you put that there? I, we put it there. Cool. Yeah, just to give it, you know, shutters. It just seemed like it needed a little bit of, it, it kind of matches the swirls on the door. Uh, and um, I think if you look back on this picture, it just, it gives it, Gives it some interest and yeah, kind of balances out. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, you know, it's a, yeah. it's like a, it's like a, a perfectly put together package. You know, in just a small area, you've got a lot going on there, right. but it's all just just what's needed. Right, love right. it. Yeah, and this is a back patio that um, a lot of great greenery, a nice yard. Um, just wanted to make it more kind of usable and. Um, and again, um, kind of pretty it up a little bit with, of course, an area rug. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so this is a different shot of it, but it's the same patio. But here's the area rug again that I think is really important. And then we put a um, built-in barbecue grill here with a countertop so that the that, that could be enjoyed. And um, mm. And then the homeowner also put up a, a fence here. So while they've got rid of a lot of the, the greening, it's kind of, kind, kind of like trees that you didn't want growing in your yard. Planted some other things in the yard that just gave it some interest. Um, things really that nice. the bees love and that the pets love and that type of thing. Like you just want to and then your- comfortable seating. I mean, this seating is... Um, Okay, but I, I really like, um, and there's actually four chairs that go around this coffee table. I really like it when you eat outside to kind of eat around a coffee table. Mm. It's a little more informal, and you can kind of sit back and cross your legs and then um, put your plate on and, or drink on the coffee table. Yeah, and the other patio set, eh, it gets the job done, but it's kind of best description, cookie cutter. <laughs> you know, it's a, yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing really custom it's just we went to one of the big box stores and took it out of the box put it together slapped it down it'll get the job done right. but this just adds so much more warmth right. mm. and this is the other shot of the backyard um again it was kind of like a fishbowl where you know it was not a lot of privacy and um but still a nice backyard but just to give it a little more um, privacy, the, the privacy fence that was put up and then um, other seating. And that's a little, um, this is a little fire pit here as well. Nice. But again, um, you know, flowers are colorful. If, if, you, if you're afraid of color, don't be afraid to, to use color outside. <laughs> these, these things, and I want your feedback on it. 
doesn't look like it's going to break the bank. It's more about the strategy behind it, your eye for it, the design. And once you, yeah, you know what your expectations are, you know where, where you're going with it. Um, yeah, there's some expense, but it's not you know, to what I think somebody might think it might cost when they just want to change up their backyard and make it more, more livable. Right. Probably that putting up the fence was the biggest expense. Mm. Um, but then, you know, the rest of it is just kind of cosmetic, but also comfortable and just kind of pulling it all together. So I, I feel I should share this at this point. Uh, and there's a reason I'm going to share this. I renovated a backyard, just sold this house a couple of years ago in between houses. Now I've, I've, I've shared with you. Uh, when I moved into this house, the backyard had a bunch of trees. It was just like scrubby brush, wiped it all out, put in a pool, patio, pergola, uh, just full on, even dug some of the trenches because I love doing that you know, electrical stuff, uh, managed the project. But here's my point to all of it. It gave me an ulcer. Le- <laughs> legit. I was-, hmm. I, was I, mean, I shouldn't be laughing. Sorry. I was working uh, very early hours and had for decades. I'm still doing that. Then you got the kids, then you got the backyard, running a business as well, and all of that. But a lot of it was the backyard because I there's a lot of expense there. I want to make sure it's done right. Um, I didn't, well, never done it before. How do I know what I'm doing? So a real ulcer to the point where I went to the hospital. Not even kidding. On my birthday. Oh, that's not good. No. So I'm bringing this up because if anybody's considering, well, you know, I'm going to do a renovation myself, I'll take care of it. All right. Well, I wish you all the best. Um, but that's why you might want to hire a professional to be the eyes, potentially even monitor the project, whatever the case may be. And looking back at all of this and even changes I've made with houses along the way, hear me out. I will always hire. <laughs> Sandy, when I find the house, you're getting a call. Um, and I'm still, you know, I'm looking at houses from time to time. Just uh, where I am is not a lot of inventory. And, you know, the market's not the best right now. But, yeah, it'll pop up. You know, I'm I'm waiting. Right. But I won't do it. You know, even the interior. I, just like, I, it's, let right. somebody else do it. That's the way it should be done. Because the outcome is going to be much better and less stress. Why do you want stress? What's what's your right. what, what's your health and, and and everything valued at? So, um, right, I can definitely help with the design plan and then help with finding the tradespeople. Sure, to actually do the work. That's probably the biggest challenge right now. But I don't use people that haven't done a good job for me in the past. Yep. But so. if it's not in, let's say somebody works with you on a virtual level and they're not you know, in the Colorado area, um, you know the questions to ask of tradespeople, even though you haven't met them. And of course, you know, your client would know that, but how do we all know what to ask them? I don't know. Right. <laughs> you know kind of wing it, you know? Right. Uh, <laughs> and that doesn't necessarily always yield the best uh, results. So yeah. uh, loving the pictures. Do you have any other ones? Yeah, I do. So yeah, you ask lots of questions and check references. Gotcha. Yeah. Ooh. So here's another one, you know, putting color again, I think it really can brighten up your front porch. And then we talked initially about just changing up the color of the front door. And this was, I think, Hamilton blue that just gave it, um, you know, kind of coordinated with the right area rug and just gave it, Mm. gave it just a nice, um, well put together look. It's interesting how colors resonate. So when I see those colors right away, I'm like, yeah, feels good. That's that's yeah. that's my jam, as they say, right there. Those colors, I would pick those in a heartbeat. Yeah. Well, you like the blue, mm. but you know, offset it with a little bit of pink and, sure. and red colors to kind of give it. Again, um, don't be afraid to play with color on your outside rooms. For sure. And here's right. another. Again, just just the you know changing up the door. Um, just adds kind of adds, adds a pop of color. Um, putting shutters on windows, window boxes. Um, these were kind of a I, I found these at a like an antique store, and I thought they would be nice to frame the door. Mm. Um, just to give it a uh, to kind of pull it all together and give 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 your brain something really nice to look at, and it feels good. When I look at that, it almost reminds me of a picture of a home in another country. Yeah, this is actually the backside of a garage. And yeah, it looks like a little 
like carriage house yeah, or a, a cottage. A cottage. Yeah. Yeah. So why not make it look like it's a cottage, even though it's just a dirty old garage? <laughs> sure, but it's got charm. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. So I think that's all of my all for my pictures, but. Um, when you're designing and somebody comes before you and said, yeah, I just want to make it more inviting. Where do you start? Is there a starting point? Is it like, let's say the area where people are going to be eating? Let's take, take that, tackle that one first. Like what, is there a, um, a priority list? Well, when somebody says they want it to be more inviting, that's kind of really broad. So, you know, tell me more about what you mean by, by inviting. And yes, what would you like to do in this space? Would you like to eat here? Do you want to cook here? Do you want, um, will you read here? Will you play with kids in this space? Because that will really kind of dictate what you want to put in that space. Hmm. You know, most of the spaces that I showed you were places to just hang out, enjoy a meal, maybe enjoy a cold drink, um, have some conversations so the the furniture is comfortable to sit in. So yeah, just asking lots of questions, how, how they use the space. So you just popped a memory in my brain here about the expectations. And when I did that backyard, I put up a pergola, just like, you know, I was looking at, you know, at the, the photo you had, this was a plastic one, bought it at Costco, like 1200 bucks, something like that. And it's got some footings that just, they're not even in the cement. It's just a bracket that's in the paver. And then that holds, you know, a two by four where the pergola goes on top of it. They come in to look at the backyard, um, inspect it. The town does for the pool and everything else. And they say, oh. <laughs> right, it wasn't, it's not a permanent structure and it's not even a covered, you know, it's the same kind of, you know, rain comes down just for decorative purposes. But yes, I got, I got taxed on it. I forget what the, the, the rate was, you know, per year. And I even called up a council person. Uh, in the town who I knew. And I'm like, is this right? She says, no, that doesn't seem, well, let me check on it. That's when she called me back and she said, oh yeah, they can, they're going to tax you on that. And by the way, even if you had a large Rubbermaid deck box, put your cushions in and all that, that's taxable as well. So I bring this up, just the expectations, not to scare anybody away, but just, you know, be aware if you might get charged (laughs) depending on your municipality, you know? Haven't run into that in Colorado. Good for so. you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that line item in my taxes. I mean, my taxes have gone up, but yeah, haven't seen that line item. <laughs> I, I didn't see the pergola tax, but maybe it came under something else. I don't know what the else was, but boy, anyway. Uh, yeah. Other thoughts, you know, other final thoughts here when doing uh, design for an outdoor space. Um, you know, colors. I think important. Um, making the space how you want to use it. And then um, if you like the pyophilia and the plants, putting things in your space that are native to the location Mm -hmm. so that um, they're low maintenance, you don't have to water them a lot, or using like those window boxes had a water um, bladder in the bottom, so you don't have to water them every day or they're going to die. Wow. Um, so thinking of things like that, I mean, you could even put cactus on your your front patio if you wanted that are don't don't require a lot of water, Love but they it. require a certain kind of light. So putting the right kind of plants, I think, was probably important as well. I think you should have plants outside to kind of complement your outdoor room. What about we talked about the rugs? What about the durability of cushions and fabrics and things like that? Like Sunbrella, major brand. Yes. But then I've heard that there there could be different layers, different uh, tiers of Sunbrella, um, where if you pay more, it works better. It maybe you know doesn't fade as soon. Your overall thoughts on all of that? Yeah, Sunbrella is definitely a really good product. They have different grades of fabrics, okay. so that can make a difference. The higher the grade, the more you pay for it. Um, but you know, it's a really good product, and eventually. It will fade, but it won't won't fade as quickly. And so, you know, putting them in when you're not using them, like here in Colorado, probably four to five months of the year, you probably should put them away. You don't want them to get snowed on and we get so much sunshine. Maybe that's not the best for it, but gotcha. um, 
You can also get covers for your chairs that you just put over them like when it rains or snows. And so that protects them, you know, but most of those fabrics for out, make sure it's an outdoor fabric. That, that's one okay. of the keys to it. I'm hearing also that they yeah. have outdoor fabrics that look just like indoor f- fabrics. Um, right. Like you don't even know the difference now. It's gotten so advanced. Right. They've come a long way. Yeah. With, with paint, with fabrics, with. Now, what about everything's gotten better? Buying resort quality furniture. Do you think it's? Do you think it's even worth it? Well, it could be resort quality, but um, well, what what do you mean by that? Maybe Just, it doesn't necessarily mean it's high high performance. That's and it's gonna my point. Last. That's my point. Yeah, like you know, if you um, you go online and uh, you know, I once looked at umbrellas and uh, yeah, you know, they said you know, used by resorts and things like that, which yeah, you know, higher price. Is it is it really that much better? Um, likely they buy more of a commercial type, so maybe it's more of a canvas instead okay. of a, a a thinner product. Um, mm. But it could be the color that's just not right for you. It's too light colored and it gets dirty because yep. you have kids or dogs or. Well, um, I, yeah. but usually when it's that, it's also kind of probably going to be really comfortable, and you can sit in it a lot because it's it has the fabric is is. Judged by how many times you can sit on it, how many rubs. Okay. There's a certain tech. Te- it's very technical when it comes to fabrics. <laughs> Out of my wheelhouse, Cole Sandy. <laughs> um, while, while we're talking about fabrics, you know, things, that's how my brain works. You massage the things pop in, memories come up. Just wanted to share this because I wish I knew. Sunshades, love them. It was at an amusement park. They had sunshades up. I was like, yeah, let me put one of those up between a deck and an area. Just put some shade over there. It was great. Did it for a couple of years, uh, worked well, put it into my shed, take it out the following spring. There's holes in it. Mice got into my shed and ate my sunshade. Uh, so mothballs put something in there. Just uh, saying, <laughs> nobody thinks about this stuff. Watch out for stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Like you don't know until you know, and uh, you know, it was kind of yeah. costly. And- Things like that, they, they blow away here in Colorado. We, we just get too much. Oh, this Tur- turbulence from the mountains, you know, the winds coming off the uh, okay. foothills. So. Yeah. yeah, there were some times where it got windy and I'm a New York, suburb of New York that, you know, you'd hear the, the hardware. <laughs> I got a little yeah. worried. Yeah. Cindy, so you need to put some decon in your garage uh, for the mice. For sure. <laughs> 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 Who would have thought? Um how do we find you? What's the best way? Um, you can email me at schuster at decoratingden.com or look on my website at roomsbysandy.decoratingden.com or call me 720-885-0019. Always love the ideas. Love the photographs. Thanks for, for enlightening us on outdoor living spaces. Didn't even know that was something that you did. <laughs> um, yeah, great stuff. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. You too. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie. This is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. Is now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council.